Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lick MRI. And this is a 38-year-old male who had an injury about two months ago, had shoulder pain, and eventually went to his doctor because the symptoms did not resolve, and the doctor wanted to get an MRI of the shoulder after an arthrogram to look at the uh, shoulder a little bit better. So this is a view of the shoulder where we see contrast white in the shoulder joint here, distending the shoulder joint with contrast. We see the bone here, this round ball is the humeral head, this is the glenoid. We see the white fluid here, light bulb bright, fill in the shoulder joint. I have another view over here. This is the same patient, but on this view, uh, the contrast that they injected gadolinium really doesn't have any effect on this image. So this is what you'd normally see if you did not have an arthrogram, if you had just saline injected, or if you had a big joint effusion, it would look just like this. Both of these are images where fat is dark and marrow is more intermediate, and the fluid looks white. And this fluid looks white just because on the sequence, fluid is light bulb bright. On this sequence, called a T1-weighted view, we have to give the contrast, gadolinium, and normally the fluid would be dark, but instead it's very bright like this. So this is an example of why we give contrast. This is what we would normally get without the gadolinium, and this is what we get with the gadolinium. And if you look side by side, they look very, very similar, except for this just has a little bit more detail. There's a little defect here. This is the superior labrum. There's a little area of contrast, the white surface contrast, it goes up into a little defect here, and it's over here, you just don't see it as well. So this is an example of how you can see things a little bit more clearly with the special uh, uh, contrast that's uh, on a T1 weighted view that has this a little bit better resolution. So it may be difficult to see a label tear and more easy to see a label tear, or in this case, it's probably a more of a developmental defect than a tear. But in this case, we see a little gray band going over the top of this bone. The dark band is the bone, glenoid. A little bit of cartilage over the top. And this is the labrum. And on this view, the contrast hugs the cartilage, and this looks more like a developmental defect, like a sublabral sulcus or a developmental cleft. And they can look just like a labral tear, except for they tend to go this direction, hugging the cartilage. And again, on this view, we um, see a similar little bit of bright signal, just not shown up as well. On this view, the labrum looks a little bit more irregular. On this view, you can still see that cartilage. It does look like it hugs the cartilage. And so this is a, a case where we see something better because we have that contrast distending the shoulder joint. This is what we would see if we didn't have the contrast. Very similar, but just adds a little bit of detail if your doctor is really worried about having a uh, labral abnormality. And again, originally I thought this was probably a labral tear, but in retrospect this is um, like more likely a developmental defect just because how clearly defined it is, very sharply defined and smooth, and it hugs this little articular cartilage here. So it's probably just a developmental defect rather than a labral tear. Now the doctor's really worried, they may still want to go in there and look at that, but uh, they'll have a better roadmap with these images. Now this patient did have some arthritis of their AC joint. This is the clavicle, acromion. They had AC degenerative arthropathy. This may be contributing to some of the pain, especially if this is just a little developmental defect. But uh, again, a case of contrast in the shoulder joint, an MRI, arthrogram, in this view, you can see how we do the arthrogram. This is lidocaine in the front of the shoulder joint. The patient's laying on their back. Here's the back. This is the round humeral head. And here's where we inject the contrast, or we numb the skin up here. We put a needle down through the deltoid muscle. This patient has a nice big interior component of the deltoid. And it goes into the joint here, and it fills it up with the fluid. And that's it. Thank you very much.